Well, congratulations. You made it through the first class of uh, Greek. Uh, I wanted to do an introduction to the quiz 1B, which we'll have on uh, Friday. And so we'll go over this uh, together. Whenever you um, are doing this, make sure you review. Um, so when we go to the next chapter, take few minutes to review. Uh, each chapter will take two days, a 1A, a 1B. We'll do that for every one. And so take time to review. Go back maybe a couple, and uh, it will just help solidify what we're learning. So uh, just as a matter of review, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, xi, omicron, pi, rho, sigma, tau, go to the next page, upsilon, phi, chi, psi, omega. So get where you can write that down where it becomes uh, second nature. Um, we did the diphthongs I, A, Oi, Hui, that's kind of a different one. So this is Huios, Al, Eu, Eu, U. Um, the sight words, uh, I would read through those again quickly. Uh, I would read through the proper names. It'll just help solidify uh, things. And then um, what we did not do in 1A, we usually will do, and that is look at um, some translation. And so we're just reading at this point, uh, but we'll work through it together. In our K, ain ha logos, kai ha logos, ain pros ton theon, kai theos ain ha logos, hutos ain in our K, pros ton theon. Panta di altu agenita, kai chorus altu agenita ude hen. Notice a rough breathing. Ha giganen in alto zoe ein, kai he zoe ein tafos ton anthropon, kai tafos in te scatia fine, kai he scatia alta u kata la ben. So where we pick up today will be um, 1B. Um, we'll pick up with these IOTA subscripts. So an IOTA subscript is written below the word. It does not affect pronunciation, but it will affect the grammar. And so you'll need to be able to start recognizing these very small letters written underneath vowels. So, in terms of the new material today, we'll look at these breathing marks. So, when a word has uh, begins with a vowel, alpha, epsilon, eta, iota, omicron, or omega, if it begins with any of those, it will have a breathing mark. And there are two breathing marks. A rough breathing uh, uh, is an H sound, a smooth breathing is no sound at all. So um, I should uh, put uh, this material in. I, I have it slightly out of order, but uh, uh, let me see. Yes, yeah, so if we look at this, this is a rough breathing ha. So what you do is you put an H in front of the letter. This is a smooth breathing, which means don't add anything. So this is ah, ha, ah. If it's a diphthong, you put the breathing mark over the second letter. So this is high, and this is I. And oddly enough, in uh, Greek, uh, rows, when they appear at the start of a letter, they always will have a rough breathing. That's why... You spell like a rhinoceros the way you do. Um, so it's an R sound. If you can trill your R, uh, that's even uh, better. So 
These are the breathing marks, rough, smooth. And then you have accents, an acute accent, a grave accent, and a circumflex. Now, originally, these were some kind of pitch thing. So acute was a rising accent, a grave was a falling accent, and a circumflex was a rising and then a falling. Uh, today, they're all three pronounced exactly the same, and they're stress accents. Um, we are most important uh, learning the grammar, and so if you can recognize accents, that's great. Don't uh, worry about getting them perfect at this stage, um, but that's what they are, acute, uh, grave, and circumflex. And so um, you can uh, accent one of the three last syllables. So if you accent the last one, it's called an, an accent on the ultima. And you can hear that. It's like the ultimate accent. If you do the one next to the last, it's called a penultimate. And you'll even hear very educated people will talk about the penultimate outcome. And they mean an outcome that's right before the end. And then you have this uh, wonderful anti-penultimate accent. So that's three deep. Um, and you can't uh, accent any farther than that. So if you have a word that's 18 syllables long, you can only accent one of the uh, three end, ultima, penultima, antipenultima. Now, when we come to the circumflex, a circumflex can only fall on the last two. So last three is for everything, but the circumflex is just the last two. Um, so this is on the last one, the only syllable, ain, and then who toss uh, um, on the next to the last. And a grave accent uh, can only appear on the last syllable. Uh, so you can't have a grave as an antipenultimate or penultimate accent, only on the ultimate. We've uh, seen these... Uh, breathings. Um, you want to work on your writing in Greek. And again, uh, always try to conform your writing to the written text. Um, these are the letters most important. So write these uh, over and over. Um, this tells you how to write them. Uh, we've already taken a quiz one uh, here. And so I'm going to pause this video.